Welcome to City Exodus. Welcome back to City Exodus. Welcome to Country Living Chronicles, episode five. And here we have another family in which God has been leading and has been doing great things as they've been led to do a special work for this time, the medical missionary work. And so with their country living testimony and with the work that they're doing, I hope that you are blessed by their testimony. Welcome to Inspired by God Ministry. The Sanctuary, Sanitarium, and Outpost Center. All right, I am here with Inspired by God Ministries here in Oklahoma, and there is great things that God is doing. You know, we know that the agencies of evil are consolidating, but God is also consolidating, and, and maybe much more than we know. So we want to make you aware that there are many of us. God is raising men up, men and women up, to do this last work. And so we want to find out what you're all doing out here in Oklahoma. And maybe we could begin by telling us a little bit about country living. You know, a lot of, a lot of us are, are, are still in the cities, and a lot of us don't know where to go and, and, and don't know where to be and what to do. What, what's the work? So maybe you could talk about a little bit about how you guys ended up here? Um, we came into the church in, um, I think, the end of 2010. And it was a shock for me, right? Uh, and so um, when we started to study and to learn um, what was at stake and what God had asked of us, we made a quick exodus to the country. Um, and uh, I would say the biggest um, takeaway, the biggest thing that really... Um, pushed us forward is to step out in faith because it, we knew it wasn't going to be something that, um, that you know, it, it was just in human understanding to, to grasp. It was something that um, the Lord was going to lead us. And so we moved from uh, Texas and then we moved to Arkansas. And when we moved to Arkansas, um, we had lots of experiences and lots of challenges, right? And I think the biggest challenge was understanding that when you're on the journey of living in a country country living lifestyle oh you're going to fall on your knees so much you're going to fall on your knees so much but it allows for us to come closer to the now, lord now did you come from texas from a big city used, used to all the conveniences yes. and, and yes. the lifestyle yes. and all of a sudden now you're just you just you're convicted you're yes. impressed to just yeah. moved to the country and now you're in the country yeah That's yeah it was it was an urgency right you know mm -hmm. I, I remember one day when I first found out about the message and I think for the first uh, six months we studied nonstop before we even entered into an Adventist church and uh, my husband he would be at work and we would be on the phone till two and three and four o'clock in the morning just studying like like this is unreal and I remember running down the stairs and mm -hmm. saying Oh my goodness, why didn't anybody tell me this, right? Oh, wow. Like it it was like the word of God was so clear and but yet and still you don't hear of these things. It's and and I remember I think I guess the biggest thing for me my husband had been in the church but uh, when he came over to the United States, you know, schooling, education was really important working and so uh, when I heard about it and we started studying and and I was like, "Wow, wait a minute." So there is a church that keeps the commandments of God, right? And and I had asked the Lord when I left the church that that we were currently going to, which I grew up in, I said, you know, Lord, is this where you want me to be? And I heard him say to me, you need to leave this place. This Wait, is so not... this wasn't an Adventist church? No, no, oh, it wasn't. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So she grew up um, Church of Christ. Yes. Church of Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so the journey and began. Sorry, and you too, Brother mm -hmm. Hollis, were you no, from I, that denomination? No, no, I grew up going to any church back any home church. In, the, in the Caribbean. Okay. And it was only in the latter part of um, 1996 to 1998, I became a Seventh Adventist back home in the Caribbean, Trinidad and Tobago. But in 1999, I came to the United States and came to the big city, lose um, any contact with God. Wow. Um, doing everything else, more into education and partying and everything, yes. college life. And was as she said, was since back in 2010. Um, she, being married, we went to her church, and which, I wasn't which really, is the Church of Christ, which was the Church okay. of Christ, and that wasn't founded in you know in in my spiritual work when, as a seven Adventist because I was running running life at, as it were. But when we we came back after studying the message, and 2012 was coming, 
And you know, every you know, if you were on a movie 2012 and all that's that right. those times, that's right. And we had a, I was in the hospital, and you know, I, that's what I worked. I came to America to become a millionaire. I'm sorry, <laughs> and and in the Babylon training, and I went after 2012, and we left, and went to to the country was is was a whole different experience. You know what I mean? So I always in the health, in the health in the hospital, and. My wife always trying to get me to come out of working and trying to follow the Lord and to do the work, mm. but I couldn't see it. You know what I mean? And it's only fast forward. Let's fast forward a couple of years, 2016. Yeah. Oh. So, so okay. I just wanted to just share. Yeah. Um, you know, we we knew it was like, wait a minute. There's gonna come a time when all of our earthly support is gonna be cut off. That's right. Right. That's and right. and that. The issue of buying and ser- selling will be a very serious one. Like you know, and those things, like they were in the back of our minds. Like, okay, we've got to make some prayerful decisions, and it's not about what we can do. But if it is that all of our earthly support will be cut off, we might as well go on and hold on to that court of faith. You know, mm. and and so um, we we decided to uh, move out in that way. And so then we after, move on from the city mm-hmm. right in the heart of. Actually, I was living on the outskirts of um, Dallas, Dallas, Texas. So we mm-hmm. living in a mesquite suburb, yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. And moved into the mountains moved of the Arkansas. Mountains. That's, that's a big, that's a big change. Right? <laughs> that's a big change. And but God, we learned lots of we, lessons. You know, we learned a lot of lessons. We had a lot of downfalls because yeah. we, we, you know, it's like um, stop eating meat, cold turkey. You will do something. Yes. So you, you, you there was before a, that, before yeah. we moved. No, but I'm not. I'm just using the, the <laughs> analogy is that it's like quitting something. Oh yeah. Cool turkey from one thing that you right. experience, and so you, there was a lot of things that we had to learn and you know, unlearn, and, and unlearn. unlearn. Right. And so that was yeah. a, that whole experience. So it, um, from 2010 to 2014, mm-hmm. 2014. Mm-hmm. So then we we moved, yeah. uh, we moved to back to Texas, but still in the country. We said okay. nope, we will not go back. So Texas, into the, Arkansas, then Texas. Back yes. to Texas. Yeah, okay. back to Texas. And then from Texas again. Hold on, well, but we, okay. you remember yeah. after when that happened, that was when that faith was like, okay. So I had been in my heart, I had been saying, Lord, you know, please just show my husband. Because mm-hmm. I at that time I came out of um, the workforce and I was I was just working um, I was I was a cosmetologist, so I did hair, right? And so when this when it the when everybody would come in, we would do Bible studies, we, whatever I could do to present the gospel. But in my heart, it's like that's just not enough. Um, so um, I I I had taken training, but my husband was sort of like he said he was sort of leery about jumping out because I understand, you know, especially as fathers, as the the leader of the home, you want to make sure that your family is provided for, right. and and I understand that. Um, but what happened was we had been praying, and we came where to the same campground. Mm-hmm. We came to the same campground, and, and where we presently yes are are, right now. Re, are yeah. right now that the Lord this has very this place. exact same campground, wow. and wow. Uh, and um, we remember we had been looking at um, Brother Maimon's um, uh, you know a lot of his classes online, and so um, when when we got here, Brother Maimon was so happened to be speaking at that camp meeting. And I remember we got back to the, the uh, cabin, and he said, I want to go to his training. Wow. And I said, Lord, you are so good. Amen. Thank just you from that so same much. Day, that same month of that same year, we packed up everything and moved to Tennessee. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We were, well, we went. We went for the training. We just went for one. We're supposed to go to, to yeah. Tennessee just for one month. Yeah. To learn yeah. under the schoolage of a meme, but a meme Wilson, and then we end up staying four years. Right. How many years? Four, four years. years. Four years. Yeah. You plan on being on there one month yeah. of training, one month. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. staying there four years. Yeah. So wow. we stayed there yeah. four years, um, teaching and also taking care of a lot of people with chronic diseases, cancer, high blood pressure. Name it, traveling around the country, traveling around Wait, the so world. Wait, so this camp meeting that you went to here, yes. was, it, was it on medical missionary work? No. So you, that, were, you were just thinking this is just a revival series? That's or usually... This normally, yeah. normally yeah. every wow. time, this campground used to be known for all the present truth speakers. Um, wow. Maurice Berry 
Chris Hodson, yes. you name it, they came here. So you, so you had the country living mindset, or you know yes. you wanted to move to the country, country. Yes. but now the work was presented to you, what yes. to do now. What to do when you're wow. there, you know what I mean? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now, so we moved to, went to Tennessee for the school. Yes, ma'am. I, I just like to share, because I started out with faith, yes, right? Yes. So um, we, we put our, because we had to put a deposit down for the training. We put the deposit down for the training, and God said, it's not gonna go how you want it to go. Mm. And so it literally came to the point to where at every every step, so you know, he now by this time he was doing a travel, he was traveling in the medical field. So he was able to choose where wherever he wanted to go. And um, it just, it got to the point to where, uh, you know, we're saying, Lord, move us forward. We wanna, we need to save up monies for this training. We're gonna be there for a whole month and we wanna want make sure that, you know, we have everything taken care of. And it literally was step by step. And I remember crying out to the Lord and saying, Father, is this what you want us to do? If this is what you want us to do, then you're gonna have to give us the money so that we can go to this training. Like, like it, was, it was four of us, our family is four of us. And so that was well over $6,000, $7,000. And that's not including that we were gonna bring our own food. That wasn't including our, you know, our, our stay and all of the, the, the travel to get there. And I tell you what, God provided. When I tell Amen. you he provided, not yeah. before, he provided on the way there, right? <laughs> Literally, Amen. money started to hit the account. Um, wow. And then when we got there, God continued to provide. And so by the time we were done with the training, all of the amount that we needed was, was provided for. And God just continued to show us and reveal to us that if you step out in the water, you just step. All you have to do is just step. He will be there to do what it is that he, he said he would do. Like he Amen. cannot go back on Amen. his word. So we went to the training for one month. We learned everything, well not everything, what um, was being taught. And we were asked to stay on as a staff to help um, train other students and to, to help to go out to take care of people hands on. Um, hands on ministry, medical missionary as is a hands on ministry, as a personal ministry. Um, kind of work. So it was something that I started to enjoy doing, taking care of, taking care of people that I need. And that's one of the things that, you know, when we started the study, I would see that the last two works are the medical missionary work and the, the core portal work, um, literary evangelism. These are the things that we begin to start to like, to, because you know, if we are the, the Bible talks in Proverbs, as a prudent man, when he foresee it evil, he make preparation. So in my sense that, man, I had to be able to provide. So I to, I'm not in the work field, but I had to make preparation. So the work that is going to go forward is going to go to the end. May as well join it right now. Amen. <laughs> and that was my, my idea. Amen. So anyway, Amen. go ahead. So anyway, so skip forward now. <laughs> skip forward so now. So now you're training for four years. So we were, yes. Wilson. We were, yes. we were training okay. in there, helping to make formulas and do different things and to teach a school, but also we now was instructing, doing instructing other classes, doing different presentations and stuff. Then we were able to branch out and have our ministry within a ministry so that we were able to go to different places. He used to send us to go speak, send us to take care of health guests, and just, I mean, to grow your, our, our ministry under his tutelage and, and his advice and stuff. Anyway, so move forward from that, that was in 2017. That we've been there from since 2014 all the way to 2018. Uh, so go for it. So we said that last year. Yeah. 20. Yeah, it was the end of 2018. 2018. Uh -huh. That last year, 2017 to 2018, for a whole year, we had been praying, and we said, Lord, we want to do this work full time and open up a sanitarium and an outpost center so that we can bring in individuals and share the love of Christ with them. Amen. And so uh, we got a phone call from a sister. Actually, it was a message on the Messenger app. And she, she messaged me and said, 
I don't know if you all know anyone that is looking for a property that is already ready to be a lifestyle center or sanitarium, but this is turnkey. Like all you have to do is move in. Everything is perfect. It's provided for. And so I said, great. I said, okay, well tell me the specs on it. So she sends all the specs and I'm like, wow, this place is amazing, you know? And so after that, um, I, I asked her to send me the money. The, how much does it cost? And she says to me, it was 800,000 plus. And so we're like, Lord, um, (laughs) lack of faith, right? So we ended up, uh, long story short, um, that's not where we are now, but we ended up being there at that place. Did not knew that we knew the people and where did we meet them? At this This same (laughs) campground. Just in case you don't know, this same <laughs> campground is where they are now. <laughs> and we'll get to that. We'll yes, get to yes, that. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And, and so, um, so we we exchanged information. Well, my husband had already been to the the place already, but yeah. I did not know that because I was on a, a health. Uh, I was we're helping helping a, a health guest that had cancer, and so um, we went again. And I said, "Wow, this is amazing. It was a beautiful layout, and uh, it was a blessing." And so. God allowed for us to get there without having to pay a dime. So, so we didn't own it. We were renting that place yes. for two years. Almost two years. So we used the place as a, as a training um, center, a place where we could teach medical missionary the, and the manual labor training and be able to have health guests. And we did women's year retreat round. year mm-hmm. round over mm-hmm. at that place mm-hmm. in another part of Oklahoma. Mm-hmm. But why is we are there now, two years, uh, when we came in at the end of 2018, beginning of 2019, COVID start, and while COVID was going on, everybody was. We had no problems. We had no problems. God was multiplying people coming from all over the country to learn this work, and we were being blessed. But anyway, after two years now, let's go forward. At the, so at the beginning of. Uh, uh-huh. We're coming forward, coming not right at the here to become here. All right, go ahead. At the end of <laughs> at the end of 20. 19. Yeah, that's um, You know, because we were only supposed to be there for a year. That yeah. was a contract, a yeah. year. Yeah. Um, but we ended up staying for almost two years, right? So at the end no, of... was this in Tennessee also? This no, was in Tishomingo, Tishomingo Oklahoma. Oklahoma. Oh, wow. Yes. Okay, okay. Now, mind you, this and this is how wonderful God was. Our truck ended up breaking down on our way to Tishomingo, Oklahoma. right? Oklahoma. Oklahoma. And we ended up stopping. Our truck broke down in... Tishomingo, Mississippi. Okay? And so we're looking and we're like, okay, Lord, we ended up staying in a, a stranger off the street, came and picked us up off the side of the road and said, your car cannot be fixed today. This is a small country town. It's Sunday. Come and stay at my place. And they're op- they open their homes for us for two wow. whole weeks. Yes. Two wow. whole weeks. And so we got there. Then, then we got to this place, uh, Tishomingo, Oklahoma. And I would say about two weeks in, because we were there and there was so much money going out into trying to fix the, the vehicle that we had, because we had our, hit, our fifth wheel um, trailer hooked up to it, we got to the point to where we said, Lord, you know, we, we don't have any more money. We don't have any more money. We don't have any more food. Father, you're going to have to answer our mm-hmm. prayer, please. And I remember it was a Friday and it was midday. We usually stop and pray at 12 o'clock. <coughs> yep. And I said, Lord, please, I don't know what you're going to do. Please, we need monies. We've got to get groceries for the rest of the week. We need it soon because we've got to prepare for the Sabbath. We need gas money to get to church, all of these things. And 15 minutes later, monies hit the account. Nobody wow. knew our struggle. Not even my mother knew what was taking place with us. Wow. And so by faith, we just continue to move forward. We continue to move forward. So now back to... Um, 2020. 2020. So we ended up looking for places. Uh, the first place we went to, it was, um, it was a, I would say there was a lot of spiritualism that was going on with mm-hmm. that ind- with that place. Probably. And we said, Lord, I don't, we don't believe this is where you want us to be. And I remember walking to, from one building to the next. And, uh, I asked the Lord, I said, father, is, is this where you want us to be? And he said, no, I have something better for you. Mm-hmm. And I said, okay, well, Lord, praise the Lord. So we, we went to, uh, after the training was over, we went to two other um, locations. The first place, it was like 150 acres. And, and we said, because that's a lot of acreage, we said, Lord, if you can give us $10,000, 
you can give us a million dollars. Yeah. Don't limit God, right? We, we, can't put like we, put, God, right? we put him in a box because yes. of our mindset of thinking that God cannot do what it is that he said he would do. It's for his work, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so we went to the first place. It was $1.2 million. And it didn't have the right the right setup. And I told my husband because he asked, he's like, "What do you think about?" I said, "Honey, I don't I don't really think this is the place." We went to the next place. It wasn't the you could see the neighbor right across the road. And so um, something told me go back online and check again. Look in Tuscahoma. Realtor.com. Realtor.com. Look in Tuscahoma, and this place came up. Now backdrop is. We had already been looking at this place. In our minds, it was that we were supposed to be at this campground. This is kind of where it all started. Right. This is where started. it all started. This was where I first, for the first time ever, heard present truth. Wow. Was this same campground 10, 11 years ago. It's almost as if God kind of took you on this circle, yes. circle and I'm brought you back. Right back here. Wow. Yes. But you learned a lot just from that journey. Oh, I'm sure. man. Wow. Mm -hmm. So now we come to this property now. Bear in mind, this property is up for sale. We've been in this property for the past six months, and this property is up for sale. And God has us here working this property, planting, growing, repairing, building as if it's our property. We are like, almost like, Jacob in Naaman's land. We are land. stewards. <laughs> we are like Jacob in Naaman's land. Yes. If you understand me, we are blessing and villain because God promises place for his people because we, we claim some promises that, you know, when God promised to Abraham and he said we were in Abraham when the God gave the promise of the promised land. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Because we were seizing him and we've been claiming some promises. That's why we've been here for the past six months. And God had this place. We could give a whole lot of testimony just on how. Yeah, what, you, it'll, it would be long. It would be long. But let, yes. let, I just want to let you read up with me. I'm claiming Deuteronomy 6.10. Talking about um, God will give us a buildings that we build not. And you're going to see as you, this video shows um, all the buildings that is on this property. Plants, um, plants, trees that we planted not. Wells dug that we dig it not. And so we have this place, by God's grace, turn this place from a campground to a it's sanitarium outpost and outpost center. Amen. Because we believe that the time is coming that God's people will need a place. You know, City Exodus, they will be exercising the city to a, a place. And we, right now we come into a crisis where food is short. And we, we use, as you see, St. Peter, we, we have to grow. We need workers and people to help to grow this um, food to be able to feed not just ourselves, but to feed our people, even the community. The neighbors. Okay? Right. The people we around. Have, um, if we really believe of the time that there's going to be sick, a lot of sick people, yes. this place is set up to be an emergency room Amen. in the sanitarium that is here in order to take people off for who are going to be suffering from where well, we know the pandemic, the solutions, but these people are going to be coming and for help. And so we need help. This thing is just, it's not just for me and my wife and the few um, staff that is here. This needs a collective help. And that's why I'm glad that you come from City Exodus because we don't have the, 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 um, the eyes, you know what I mean? To see what the things that you know, what I'm saying we don't have the crowd or the the following or whatever. Mm -hmm. to, to and to to have to have you come out for this this period of time was a blessing, maybe because it's for such a time like this. Amen. God has a purpose for everything. God so have a it's purpose. It's not a coincidence that we met. <laughs> you know, we actually I actually seen them at Phoenix at the Liberty and Health Alliance uh, event over in Phoenix Amen. a couple months ago. I didn't really get to talk to them because with all the work that we were yes. doing that was going on, yes. all the action. Um, but when we were invited here to Oklahoma to speak, 
I saw them walk through that door. I said, I need to speak to them. <laughs> yeah. Praise I God. Definitely need, I knew I was impressed that I needed to talk to them now, that this was, this was not just by coincidence that, that uh, we ran into each other. And so definitely after hearing more about their work, I'm glad that you guys are going to be aware of what they're doing because it takes a lot of faith just to be able to do country living. But country living isn't just about living in the country and yes. hiding. No, yes. again, yes. you call yourself a doomsday prepper, yes. call yourself a homesteader mm -hmm. and, and make a YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like mm -hmm. a, any other one, any other homesteader, right? Mm -hmm. But no, this is God's work. We're Amen. Adventists. Amen. And we're waiting for Christ soon coming, which is very soon. It's yes. imminent. It's yes. imminent return. Mm -hmm. And so what they're doing is what we should all be doing. Amen. We, should, we need to do this work. We want to go home. Amen. Amen. And so I'm glad that I met both of you. And it's just an inspiration and encouragement to many, many people, I hope, and that, um, that they could also either help in any way they can. And I'm going to put the information on the screen here or even on the description below for you guys to contact them if there's any way that you could help them, even just through prayer. Um, in any way you can, please contact uh, Brother Hollis and Sister Shantoya and, and hopefully whatever you're impressed to do, whether it be prayer Maybe you could help in any other way. Maybe you want to come and help. And, and, and uh, I'm sure you guys might need some help in hands, Amen. right? Amen. We need Amen. a lot of help. And maybe you want to learn some medical missionary work. Amen. And that's true. Because we, have, we have right? some schools coming up. We have one coming up again in the next two weeks. I don't know what time this video is going to come out. But we have schools year-round because... March the 6th we, through May the 15th. We got to have... We had to revive back the Madison School. Amen. Because there was a purpose for that. And this is our plan is to revive that. Because everybody that leave this place... This sanctuary, this had to be able to be a minute man for the Lord. That Amen. they could be able to take care of the the, the heal the sick. That's it, that's it. The, the thing in Matthew 20, Matthew 20, we had to heal the sick, mm -hmm. raise the dead, freely give, freely receive. That, that, the, the whole thing that is because we had to be able to preach our everlasting gospel and to win soul and we had to do like what Christ did. What Christ did, they meet the needs Amen. and then tell them, bid them to follow. And that's mm -hmm. our whole purpose here is to. Not just have one people like, you know, Elijah said he was the only one, but God said, no, I still have 7,000 7, 7, 7, more. Amen. You know what I mean? And who knows? You could be part of that 7,000. Mm -hmm. We all need to be part to be able to, to help. I know we haven't been, we haven't, we're not going to bend the knees. We got, well, we got to pray that we don't to bend him, the knees. To the God Father that we don't bend the knees. We can't Amen. be like Peter and say, Lord, we wouldn't do these certain things, but we got to pray always. Amen. Trusting that He will be able to keep us, keep us from falling, mm -hmm. keep us from bending, mm -hmm. because time is coming. And I'm glad for a mission like City Exodus, and for people like you, because we need it. And we're gonna tell you more about the whole adventure on this place so far. But let you know, rest assured, God is in control. Amen. You know what I mean? Amen. Amen. God is in control. Amen. Well, I hope that you've been inspired by God. Amen. <laughs> Thank you. Right. It's amazing how God leads people to where they need to be. And be encouraged because God owns all the gold and silver and He will always provide a way for His people, especially now as we get to the end. And so I hope that you've been encouraged. Now be blessed and be a blessing. Be blessed and be a blessing.